piece that she's wearing, we're going to take that style and we're going to be doing a few iconic figures in history. You know, like your Dorothy Dandridge's or your Frida Kahlo's and do some really cool imagery and some other things on the, on the pieces. Billie Holiday. Billie Holiday. Yeah. Billie Holiday, yeah. Yeah. Maria Felix, uh, you know, various other. With us, it's been abstraction. And so we're now thinking, okay, let's open it up and do more with uh, some, some of, you know, some actual figures that are in history. So you got any questions, thoughts, or comments? <laughs> That's it. We're glad that you uh, came here to listen yeah. to our little spiel and put something on your mind. We, we, we think it's kind of cool to just invite people now and then and do these little uh, open discussion things. Last time that we had the discussion, it was very lively, you know, and uh, interesting some of the things, the comments that people had stated. But it's all about just engaging people in the art of uh, conversation and thinking and uh, hearing each other's viewpoints mm -hmm. on the subject of art and happens to be our work. So I don't know um, how you adapted the name of the maker. You want to explain it? Well, who was I telling? <laughs> uh, oh, I was telling Kim and uh, her husband. <coughs> so now I have to tell you. <laughs> well, no, um, we're trying to figure out what the what our names should be, and came up with, I don't remember what names we came up with, but um, basically it just started off because he, uh, he started calling me Mocha out of the, just, he started calling me Mocha, and then, um, so obviously because of you know, Hispanic, brown, brown skin, Mexican, um, um, and then uh, he told me, or he I grew saying, up with the name Coco. He grew, he grew up with the name Coco, so obviously, why did he call you Coco? <laughs> Well, uh, it was I would put something in my drink in a syrup, a brown syrup, and you know, it just kind of stuck. You know, when I was a kid, you put cocoa in the strawberry ice cream. Mm -hmm. What's your problem? Yeah, you know, just something stuck. <laughs> you know, two flavors that didn't seem to have anything to do with each other. And largely because it, we were thinking of a name that would catch, that says races come together. And it's interesting because when we were interviewed. They would either interview her from the Hispanic perspective or interview me from the African American perspective. So it's sort of like we're trying to put something together. You know, it was not just a cutesy thing, it was more about a name that would stick, something that is in people's consciousness that talks about the colors, all the colors that come together. You know, people of color, you know, with contrasting cultures and and, and, and things that pull us together, you know, that make us unique and interesting in our own right. And when we come together, we do something that's really very, you know, very ethnic and, and beautiful and uh, shows our, our variety. It's like uh, cream in your coffee, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of melding uh, races and peoples together to have a hopefully a, a singular thought or goal or complementary to each other. So a coco moco is Because you're a logo and you're coco moco about the Actually, it's the, the sun and moon. We forgot to talk about sun and moon. Hmm. Well, we have oh, a sun and moon logo. Okay. I thought I saw something. Yeah, it's um, yeah, the sun, moon, the, the personalities. The, you know, I guess in our personalities, it was was a little more moon-like, I was more like a, you know, sun-like, and it seemed like it was, it fit, and it, um, it, it said, uh, light, and, light and dark, yeah, you know, Boy both sides, you know, that whole dichotomy, and so, uh, that, that, our, our, the, the logo and the whole deal just had to do with our, you know, just people coming together yeah. of color, you know, and making things click, <laughs> and that's something that uh, we need to do here, you know, is appreciate the varieties and the, you know, 
things that each individual uh, offers to the situation. Is there a particular age group that you have found to be more receptive to your products, or have you had clientele pretty much across the board? We have no age group. Yeah, we found out that it just, it's all mixed. Right? Yeah. I mean, we have like 12 years old, and like liking these one mom bought one of these for a girl, and mm -hmm. some old ladies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, older, older individuals. Um, you know, like, uh, oh, wow, we've had individuals that actually, oh, they're good. They're all right. They're cool. Yeah, no problem. We would have our events, and some individuals would come, you know, they're in their 60s and their 70s, and they would visit the, the event, you know, the studios. I've been to the studio, the, uh, the, the booths that we have set up. Uh, they, they, they would reorder or bring their friends, and uh, they're in their 70s. Uh, some were coming back, they're in their 30s of college. Uh, we had a nice cross section, even when we did a little bit of a marketing thing. Get a sense of what you know. People were saying we got uh, real good feedback. Uh, it was a cross section, and there were various nationalities that all seemed to really appreciate that this these pieces people of most backgrounds could appreciate. You know, really like. Uh, so um, no age groups. It's thus far. It's, you know, and what about gender? You still we got men that will grab the. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> they, they grab the women? <laughs> That's always my next question. Do you have guys that would like to crochet? Yeah, actually, yeah, we had a little guy um, um, have a custom piece made with a little bit of crochet, mm -hmm. but he still has to Yeah, we've actually had a few people throughout have yeah. gotten like uh, Rick. Oh, yeah, Rick, he bought one. Yeah, he bought well, they don't know Rick, but I'm just saying. Because <laughs> um, I was thinking, especially because of the guys, the first time I was a familiar with Coco Boca, of course I came up with Nikki, who was like, Coco Boca, I was like, yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. um, but when I saw the um, the shirts with the crochet, because I used to date someone who wore a lot of poofies, and I immediately thought about him, I was like, oh, he would, he would love to have like shirts with crochet, like a crochet collar just the bottom, mm -hmm. or yeah. you know, on the sleeves, you yeah. know, even yeah. that type of thing, or even like a, a shirt, which maybe you might consider this in the future, like a shirt but cut that's cut like a dashiki, so like not have the collar, have it cut down, and have the crochet. You know what? I've right. actually got one. I've actually Sweet. Worn yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I want yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to yeah, make yeah. one. So I was thinking that, but that's incredibly, it's still incredibly marketable across gender with the crochet. Yeah. So. And now it was really cool that uh, we were getting the responses that we were getting about the pieces. And, uh, you know, the crochet, you, you know, when we first think about it, God, it's great. But that was my mindset at the time. And she popped it together and I did my art thing on there. And wow, you know, good response. And, and the guys. As well as you know, there's this one one stands out. This big artist guy, uh, he was trying to buy something uh, for himself, and he saw the milk boss style, and he says, "Dude, I want that." And I'm like, "Well, it's for the ladies, but uh, he said, well, you know, maybe you can work it or fix it or do something, maybe split it, but I want that." He was this Afrocentric, six and a half foot tall mm -hmm. artist, you know, and. Uh, Ordered him a milk yeah. monster, and then we've had other people that have actually pulled. You know, they've gotten the, I guess like the shirt that Blues is wearing. Guys will wear it because it's kind of oh, athletic. Yeah. yeah, you know, some guys. It's one some guy guys buy the fem shirts because they want it nice and tight. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's funny. It's funny. It's really great. You know what uh, we uh, what the responses that we get. You know. But that's basically it, and. Uh, you know, we, we 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 make these pieces because this is what this is how we see. This is how we see. Any other friends? This now ends this session. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah, we we now you get a sense to some degree of hopefully why we do what we do. I actually do have another question. So when yeah. you when you're working with the kids, uh, 
do you guys explain to them like the messaging or like the purpose of images or words that they choose? Because I know like at the school, mm -hmm. the kids are picking words to put on there. You know, some of them will just like money and this. And yeah. This. I, I, but I mean, is there a conversation around like mm -hmm. why we're choosing certain words or the messaging or the impact that you can have from choosing words that are powerful as opposed to just like flashy or? Right. Yeah, that's a good point, because I know that's more your problem. Right, I mean, I, I, I do try to, like, Suggest. tell them that, you know, don't pick something that already exists out there, like, come up with something that's own, but also to make something that's, that speaks to somebody or that's important, to be positive. Uh -huh. You know, that's something that I do tell them. Um, but maybe, maybe, maybe I could emphasize it. Emphasize it, emphasize it a little bit more because they, they end up uh, putting like things like yeah. I love money or what was yeah. Yeah. Yeah, things like yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a, it's oh, it echoes swag. the same thing swag. that they are yeah. so swag. exposed to and you know it's just a soup out there mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and they're exposed to a lot and unfortunately yeah. sometimes parents aren't that active proactive or they interact with the kids and, you know, suggesting hey you know should think that way. Yeah. Because I think with, I mean, the kids at the school that we're doing, mm -hmm. like, sometimes they just need a reminder of like the, what their value, what do they value. Mm -hmm. So even if they think at first, okay, I want to put I love money or this or that, you know, if like a real conversation around, you know, what, mm -hmm. what is this, what are you representing by what you're putting in your shirt or what value do you want to promote, you know. Mm -hmm. And then maybe even like, Approving it before they come. Like, what are you going to say and why? And then, and then you can say, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like, no, I don't know if you really thought that through. Until they come up with one. Well, I do do a lot of that. But yeah, they still end up doing <laughs> Yeah. But I mean, that's up to me, right? To decide that that's what they're going to do. So, I guess. But some of them have been, you know, a little bit more positive. Because some of the kids don't actually go that way. I mean, they think mm -hmm. positively, they're putting a message that means something to them, and other kids will go the easy route, just like whatever they come up with. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I know, like at my end, you know, when it comes down to the sound, you know, the, the stylings of a sculpture or whatever, you know, they come up with hearts and love and mm -hmm. little crazy Sorry. things. I was like, let's, let's go in another direction. Yeah, sometimes they yeah, just. The typical things that they know, like, mm -hmm. what is it? Yeah, just, just like, kind of, yeah, just things. Cartoons. That, they want to do that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's that's one of the things that I know that in, uh, like, take for instance, there's a couple of people that left earlier, and they're interested in having, and we've already done some designs for them mm -hmm. for this uh, youth group. <coughs> and it's very empowering, and it's very direct as to, you know, use your mind, uh, collaborate, appreciate uh, the diversity that. Uh, you know, exists, uh, uh, you know, just very empowering mm -hmm. type of, of images, and uh, it's something that, you know, you got to keep in front of the kids often, right. because right. they are just bombarded with a lot of video nonsense, a lot of computer uh, imagery, uh, you know, they, you know, they're off to the side, on the side column, they're trying to sell them something, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. right. Little school across the bottom. Yeah, yeah. You know. Cause I'm just thinking, as from a teacher perspective, like you know, before they can even touch the artwork, it's like really getting them to be able to articulate the value or the message or the you know, what is the one word that you want to include on your shirt that's going to mean something to the greater good? You know, mm -hmm. so it's not just about you, but it's about the message that you're sending to society. And it's like. Because the, the shirts end up in the same style, so they, they in turn represent you guys. Right. So like when a kid walks down the street with a shirt they made from your class that says I love money, it <laughs> kind of like <laughs> the, you know, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it sends a different exactly. message, you know. Exactly. But when I see the shirts that the kids make, I know that they come from you guys because yeah. of the way they the best yeah. shirt. So yeah, exactly. yeah, so I'm just worried about like yeah, how to you know yeah. how to how to how to get that up front from the kids you know right. before they can get into designing their shirt like they have to understand the purpose of the yeah. of this of exercise and yeah. that they go away with something that's uh, you know kind of put something in their mind it's yeah. not just uh, you know putting some paint to 
to yeah. the fabric. Yeah. yeah. You got a good point. And uh, that's and again, that's one of the things about you know what we're doing. Um, uh, our our phraseology, our, our thoughts tend to be somewhat more adultish, but uh, it's not that you know persons who are younger can feel those same things, like the, the, the idea of not fragile, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to not be taken, for, you know, ad advantage of, uh, or that, uh, that maybe this is a person that, you know, has some skin, you know, there's, there's several things. Some that things, you know, I think what you said earlier about the grit, you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Our kids, the kids at, at the school, they, they have that grit, you know, they've been through some stuff, they know, yeah. you know, so it's not some just about that. the flashy, you know, uh, it's not about money and this and that, the, the, the people they see on TV, they have some real stuff that they deal with, so getting, like, somehow uncovering that, you know, I think would be, when they walk away with a finished product, a t-shirt that says something that speaks to them and to other kids, I think would be... Really yeah, like I had him do like a piece, um, that was like the subject, like mm -hmm. a piece, how can you do a piece more? You know, the, the, the first thing that comes out of the hate is, uh, out of the mind is uh, something about hate. Uh, don't be a hater. Don't be yeah, a hater. That's what um, I, yeah. yeah, things like yeah. that, I was like, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And something yeah. that they say right away, just, they're seeking attention from mm -hmm. the, their peers that are in the room, you know, it's like not even what they really... I mean, sometimes you have to get past that to get to like what yeah. they're really thinking about. Because they have some real stuff that they deal with. So oh, it's yeah. like, how do we get to that and get past the. Let them like say I, had one, stuff I had one boy that concerned me because he uh, was starting to tell me that his father gave him some hunting tools huh. to put in his school bag. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait a minute, is this true or what? Yeah. So I had to follow him to his locker. And I'm like, well, it's like, well, I don't know if I put it in here, but let me see. And he took out a, um, it, was a it was a tongue depressor, like a wooden tongue depressor, mm -hmm. but it was like kind of cut in half, so it was a little sharp at the end. Mm -hmm. I was like, but this is a, what is this? It's, it's like, look, it's sharp, and he would like put it on my hand. Yeah. So even that was a little, a little off. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's some of these kids do go through. Yeah, some of the things you're saying. Experience some problems. Yeah. Some things that yeah. come out. Yeah, yeah, these kids are like dealing with some really. I mean, the fact is, they're the, the future leaders, so it's like, how can we start now getting them to think about what changes need to happen, what's going on in our world that they can impact, you know, what school do you teach at, what school it's, um, it's a charter school, it's, it's a University of Chicago charter. Mm -hmm. local, yeah, and, uh, yeah, the, it's just really something how, you know, a lot of these kids, um, they're responding to things they see on television. Uh, or some things that their parents do. <laughs> yeah, so the, I think the father, she said, yeah, he's going to go hunting and kill some animals, and we're going to go in, we're going to go in, uh, we're going to do a mass murder. Some kind, some kind of, he's, off. About, he's a mass killer, I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of disturbing some of the things that come out. Yeah, you should, yeah, you should, 